you're playing a game. You're on a boat that has to keep moving when you come to a two-way junction. Stay left and you will fall off a cliff face and die. Stay right and you will come across some very hungry bears. It's not looking that good. So what will it be? Left or right? Well, it turns out both paths are gated and the other closes once you make your decision. But it takes a bit of time for the gate to close. You have an idea. What if you go one way, then immediately turn around and choose the other side? You can do this decision flipping faster than the gates can close. And so by oscillating between, you effectively remain perpetuating in a state of indecision. But what if we could apply this similar logic to prevent two paths of aging within a cell? Would that even be possible? What would that tell us if it was possible? Well, how convenient. In this video, we will take a look at this recent paper that used engineering principles to rationally optimise ageing dynamics towards extended longevity. And this involved making a synthetic gene oscillator. So let's discuss. So this story starts with an observation that was published in 2020. In this paper, the researchers presented that yeast cells show two different forms of ageing. Either they slow down the biosynthesis of heme, which results in mitochondrial dysfunction, or they lose the ability to cause silencing of ribosomal DNA. For now, you don't really need to understand fully how these pathways operate within yeast. Just appreciate that there are these two mechanisms and two key protein players involved in their regulation is SIR2 that controls gene silencing and HAP4 that controls the heme production. So like how you could go left or right in the game example at the start of this video and that either offence occurs and the cell is committed to it. So, like in the game, the question is raised. What controls which path is taken, and can you manipulate yeast such that they prolong this decision and live longer? Well, that brings us to this latest paper, Engineering Longevity, Design of a Synthetic Gene Oscillator to Slow Cellular Aging, where essentially they resaw this dichotomous endpoint in their data where they see one fate chosen over the other, and wondered if they could do something about this to cause it to oscillate between the two fates instead of committing to one. To understand this, we first have to look at the gene circuit thought to underpin this decision making, and we can see it's a toggle switch. Increased activity of SIR2 represses HAP, so that HAP can no longer repress SIR2, so SIR2 increases. Conversely, if we increase HAP, that represses SIR2, and so the repression of HAP declines, and therefore HAP increases. So they're both self-reinforcing pathways. Now, what's presented in this most current paper is what would happen if this gene circuit was changed from this toggle switch to an oscillator. And by having an oscillator, it prevents the cell committing to either of the cell fates. In this case, ribosomal DNA silencing or heme biogenesis, both of which are a sign of aging in these cells. Now, one example of an oscillator in bio biological systems is a delayed negative feedback loop. Let's explain. This time, let's imagine that SIR2 still represses HAP, but HAP is now a strong activator of SIR2. Therefore, if we repress HAP, it prevents more SIR2 activity. If we lose SIR2 activity, that means that HAP is no longer repressed. If HAP is no longer repressed, then it becomes active and it can reactivate SIR2. And the story continues. It's an oscillation. Now, many oscillatory systems within cells actually decay over time. So it was important to actually check that this 
you know, theoretical idea could actually work and could be built into a biological system. Which leads us to the question of, well, how exactly do you go about re-engineering a system like this? Well, we turn to genetic engineering. To turn HAP from an inhibitor to an activator of SER2, they had to edit the promoter region, the region of DNA that regulates the activity of SER2, to include one that is bound and activated by HAP. I make it sound trivial, but it requires some tailoring and understanding of genetic control elements to ensure that the system is robust. You don't want it to be leaky, as if it is, then there could be gene expression when we don't want there to be, and the system wouldn't work. And in fact, in this paper, they did try various variations, and none of the circuits enabled sustained oscillations in a major fraction of cells which demonstrated the importance of connectivity and strength for feedback interactions in generating oscillations. Now, despite this, with their robust system, not all of their cells actually showed sustained oscillations. Within the population, they could actually see two groups, those that did oscillate, called sustained, and those that continued to increase their two expression, and they deviated. But the deviated were a minority, and by and large, the genetic modifications that they made in the system worked. So did they actually have any influence over lifespan by having this oscillatory circuit? Well, among the engineered cells, those aging with sustained oscillations actually had greater lifespan extension. It was a 105% increase in lifespan, doubling that of wild type for those with the sustained oscillation, whilst those with the deviated oscillations still had a 45% increase relative to that of the wild type, the unmodified strains. Therefore, maintaining these oscillations appears to be important for maximally extending lifespan, essentially keeping the cell in a prolonged state of indecision. Now, an interesting question that was studied in this paper is how does it compare to known long-lived mutations in yeast? Well, if we take a look at this figure here, we can see that this oscillatory modification matches, if not outperforms, some of the currently known long-lived strains, partly because there is less variance within the oscillatory strain. They actually were able to build such a robust system here. So what are the key take-homes from this paper? Well, firstly, it goes to show that it's possible to rationally rewire cellular dynamics as a way to delay cellular aging and increase longevity. Essentially, synthetic biology is cool. But this was in yeast, where there is a dichotomous endgame in their aging state, and a circuitry was understood. Is there a way that we can find innovative strategies to extend this to mammalian cells? Well, hopefully, well, and I guess we'll see, but it's important to state that even with simple design circuits in biological systems, small perturbations can actually have a substantial effect. But actually one of the more interesting findings from the study is, is this actually support for programmed aging, which I discussed about in my last video. Many studies have succeeded in generating specific spatiotemporal dynamics and functions with synthetic gene circuits. Yet it remains a challenge to rationally engineer a biological trait as complex as longevity. Our work represents a proof of concept demonstrating the successful application of synthetic biology to reprogram the cellular aging process and may lay the foundation for designing synthetic gene circuits to effectively promote longevity in more complex organisms. So essentially, I don't think it supports either way. I don't think that's what the aim of this paper was. But what I think is more important to take from this study is that while we can intervene and show genetically that there's ways to extend longevity, it's better to consider the dynamics, the layer above a single gene, and to understand how gene networks are built and manipulate those circuits or redesign those circuits to achieve desirable outcomes. Not simple, but pinpointing the tunable knobs and swappable wires 
that could be manipulated to redirect the cell's natural dynamics away from aging towards their healthy states could be something very well worth pursuing. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this brief video into this paper. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.